Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating the new features in Krita 4.0. The first new feature that we'll look at is an update to the vector tools, which are now in SVG format. So if we click on the little triangle here next to the plus button, we can create a new vector layer. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this rectangle tool here, and let's just draw a rectangle. Now if we switch to the edit shapes tool, and we have some options, we can drag this to round the corners, very similar to how you can do it in Adobe Illustrator. So that's a very neat feature. If I switch to the regular select shapes tool, then I can, of course, squish this down. I can hover over the corner to get the rotate option, and I can rotate it. Go ahead and hit Enter to apply those changes. If we look under Tool Options, there are also some options here for the corner radius that we can edit here. If we want to change the colors, we can do that quite easily. We can select a color, and we can change the fill, or we can change the outline. Let's go ahead and add another shape here. Let's add the circle. Now if we go back to our arrow tool, we can move these layers around just like we would in a vector application. We also have options for each of these shapes depending on which one we have selected. We can click on here and we can change the stroke color to something else if we want to. Click on this shape, click on the line, change the stroke color. Could even be a gradient if you wanted it to be a gradient. We can increase or decrease the thickness as well. And we can even drag to select both of these shapes and there's a new feature where we can right click on the combination of shapes, go to logical operations, and then unite, and we can fuse those two shapes together. So I'm not gonna go through every single feature of the vector tools. The vector tools have been around in Krita for a little while, but they're just improved in this version. Because they're now in SVG format, I can actually save this and import it into Inkscape, which is a free vector editing application, or I could even bring it into Adobe Illustrator if I wanted to. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll go to File, Save, We'll save this as a Krita document. And as you can see, we have this Krita file here. What we wanna do is we wanna to go to View and we want to show file name extensions. We can see that this is a .kra file, but if we change the file extension to zip and click OK, we look inside that zip folder and then unnamed and layers and then layer two shape layer, we have the content SVG that we could bring in into a vector editing application. So for example, I could extract that zip file, take that SVG, and I could bring it into Adobe Illustrator, Inkscape, or any other vector editing application that can support SVG. And here in Adobe Illustrator, you can see that I can edit this just like it's a vector file. So if I wanted to change the color, I could easily do that, and I can edit it in multiple ways. You can also select vector layers and then copy and paste them into Inkscape. Another way you can export layers is to go to Layer, and then Import Export, Save Vector Layer as SVG. And here you can see I can save it in the SVG file format. The next new feature in Krita 4.0 that we'll look at is the new text tool. We'll select that here in the toolbar and we can just simply drag to create some text. I'm gonna select the text here and then change the color and the font. Click on save and then it'll update. I'll go ahead and change the text so it says something else. Now this text is an SVG vector format as well. So I can go ahead and close. I have my text here. If I want, I can select my arrow tool and I can move it around. If I want to make it bigger or smaller, I can select my transformation tool and I can easily scale it up or down. And even if I make it really big because it's vector format, it's not going to get blurry. So I have full control over this as if it's just regular vector text. If I want to edit that text, I'll select the type tool. I'll click on the text that I want to edit and then over on the right in this palette, I can click on edit text and I could change what my text says. I could add some exclamation points, click on save to update it. I also have shortcuts here that'll determine the next text that I create. So if I have it set to this setting here, and I create a new line of text, then it's going to have those presets. The next new feature that we'll look at is the Colorize Mask tool. And this is the one that I'm most excited about because it will let you automatically fill in line art. So I have some line art here that I created. Let's take a look at how this tool works. I'm gonna zoom in to a character here. And I'll go ahead and just hide some of these other layers. So I'm going to select the layer with the ink on it. Then I'll select the Colorize Mask tool. I've gone ahead and clicked on the layer that I want to colorize. That creates a Colorize layer. I'm going to choose my color selector, choose a color for the hair here. And then I'll just draw, just putting some little strokes in the areas that I want to fill in. But I don't have to color it in all the way. I just want to try to designate where the hair is here. I'll select another color like this pink, and this will go on the outfit here, just everywhere where there's supposed to be pink. 
We'll choose a color for the shoes. Maybe those will be this color here, and we'll put in some of that. We'll choose a flesh tone for the skin. We'll put that in on the face. We'll go back to tool options now. We'll click on update. Now it's going to look like it's not doing anything, but eventually it will update and it will fill in all of your colors. We can hide the keystrokes and we can see the output here. It's filling in too much of the background. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the keystrokes. We need to go back to our color. We need to choose white for the background color here. Just fill in the background area so that it knows that the background is supposed to be that color. A little area there in between the arm as well. Go back to tool options, click on update again, and then just give it a minute to do its thing. And now if we hide the keystrokes, we can see that it filled in our artwork very quickly. So now obviously I could put in more detail and you know make the claws the right color here and do the teeth and the eyebrows and all that stuff. But this is just to give you an example of how this works. You can spend more time playing with it. There's also settings here that you can play with if you want to try to make the paint not go outside of gaps and clean it up and things like that. But if we want to be able to edit this now as individual layers, what we can do is we can go to layer, convert to paint layer, and then we want to choose layer, split, and then split layer. And we'll just go ahead and click on apply. And now if you look in the layers palette, you can see that it separated all of the individual colors onto different layers. It grouped them into a group and it gave them names, which is very helpful. There's also the colorize mask that still remains. So if you ever wanted to edit that, you can. We can just hide that layer. We can look down at these different colored layers and you can see that here's a layer for the hair and a layer for the outfit and so on. So this is an awesome tool for people who create line art because that's not only colorizing the line art and making sure that there aren't any gaps between the color and the lines, which is a common problem when you use the paint bucket, but it's also making sure to separate those colors onto layers so that you can edit them later or you could stencil them off and shade them. Excellent feature, very, very cool feature. I'm definitely gonna have to play with this one more. And the beauty is because we have this colorized mask that we can go back and edit at any time, we can just save this as a Krita file by going to save. And as long as we keep it in this Krita format, we're gonna be able to access this colorized mask layer and make changes to it. If you save it as any other format, you'll lose that editability, so just keep that in mind. If you wanna learn more about how this tool works, check out Krita's documentation. Next, we'll look at some of the brushes. Here's a brush that was recommended to me by one of my viewers. It's called Pencil 5 Tilted, and this supports pen tilt. So if I keep my pen upright, then I get a line like this. But if I begin to tilt it, then I can kind of shade with the side of my pencil. Pretty cool effect if you like shading that way, and you can get a nice dynamic effect with your pencil here. Let's try another one. Let's try Pencil Quick Shade. Very cool brush, works with pen pressure to adjust the opacity nice and oily looking. You can dab with it to create little stamps and it probably works well for clouds. Krita's brush engine is really getting a lot better. Let's try a few other brushes here. Here's kind of a bristly one. Gives you these nice bristly looking results. Here's another one called Bristles Glaze. So I'm going to put down a little bit of white here and select a different color and let's see how well it glazes. Oh, it's a nice glazing brush so you can build up your glazes gradually like this. Pretty nice brush, I have to say. Let's try this Wet Bristles Rough. Very oily, nice, smudgy brush. And then there's these blenders if you wanted to blend and smudge. So Krita is actually doing a pretty good job of giving some of these paid art applications a run for their money as far as their brush engine. In earlier versions, I wasn't all that impressed with it, but as they're adding more blenders and more random and smudgy painterly brushes, it's quickly becoming a much better application. I'm gonna select this Bristles Flat Rough brush which looks like this. And let's take a look at some improvements to the brush editor. We can just click on the brush up here in the properties bar. And here we can edit all the different properties for this brush. Let's look under brush tip. And if I change through these different options, you can see in real time that the brush stroke is changing. So we can actually see the changes that we're making. Let's try this here and we'll do a test. You can see we get a brush like that. Another new feature is that we can now mask a brush tip or we can create a stencil on top of it to help it look even more random and organic. We look under masked brush, then we can enable brush tip and we can put a mask on the tip of the brush. So for example, I could do something like this to add some texture. Now when I paint with this brush, it has two different layers. It has the brush tip, which changes the look of the brush, but it also has a mask, which adds a little bit more texture and variety to it. We can get some really interesting combinations if we go between the mask and the different brush tips. 
I try this here, and even though I'm using the same brush, I'm getting a completely different look. Let's look under blending mode now, and we can add a blending mode. For example, we could try screen. Now if we paint, then our brush is gonna kind of build up on itself and get lighter and lighter, and we can get something that looks kind of like sea foam. If we go in and we change that again, we make it multiply, and we're going to get a different result where it's gonna build up darker and darker on itself. We switch that to something else, such as overlay, and it's gonna be kind of a mix of the two. Now while we're on the topic of brushes, let's talk a little bit about brush size because in Krita version 3, the maximum brush size was 1000 pixels and that's just unacceptable. To edit the maximum brush size, we can go to Settings, Configure Krita, and then under General, Miscellaneous, here's where we can change the maximum brush size. We'll need to restart Krita in order to be able to apply this. Now you can change this up to 10,000 pixels in diameter, but the larger you make this, the slower it's going to perform and it might even crash your computer. So let's just try, let's see what happens if I make a 10,000 pixel brush. Click on OK, I'll restart Krita, and I'll just increase my brush size, super huge like this. I have this giant brush, and I can paint with it. I'm painting a stroke right now, and it's not doing anything. It's just gonna probably go slow as molasses. I've actually picked up my pen, and then I'm just waiting. And there goes the brush, it's depositing ever so slowly. Each time it puts down a stamp, Consider that to be a 10,000 pixel by 10,000 pixel image that you'd be pasting in, essentially. So think about how long it would take you to do that. It's a lot of resources. It hasn't crashed, so that's good. And I can still move around my icon. I can still select other tools. I can select other brushes. But if I start painting, it's not going to let me do anything until that brush finishes. And I did a lot of strokes with that brush. It's actually still going. I can try hitting escape, but if I hit it several times, it seems to have canceled it out. So that's good. So at least if it locks up, there's a way to get out. So let's try a smaller brush now. Let's not quite do 10,000 pixels, but let's do a pretty big brush. And performance wise, for as large as this is, that's not too bad. The cursor feels nice and fluid, so that's nice. It's not super laggy. Let's go a little bit smaller and let's choose a different color so we can see that. And again, that's pretty fluid, pretty smooth for being a pretty big brush. Let's try an airbrush now with white. Let's make a really big airbrush. I like to use that a lot when I'm painting. Very nice and smooth and quick with this big airbrush. So that's nice. Let's choose red and let's go for the biggest airbrush possible. We'll go 10,000 pixels and we'll try a stroke. And again, it's locked up, it doesn't do anything. So. There's no point in making your brush that big. Most people's computers are not going to be able to handle that. I'll just hit escape to cancel out of that. And we'll reduce the brush size to something more reasonable that we can actually see. Here's one that's about as big as the canvas. And we can make a mark. And it's actually pretty quick considering the size. So that's a good way to fill in your background and make these nice smooth gradients. Let's look at another new feature. Let's select the zoom tool here. And we'll just zoom in really close. When we get to a certain point past 800%, we can now see individual pixels and we can edit the pixel grid. The next new feature that we'll look at is the isometric grid. That can be found under settings, dockers, and then grid and guides. Go ahead and just move that over here so we can see it. Now under grid type, we can change this to isometric. We can show the grid and then we can play with the angle of the grid and the cell spacing if we want the grid to be larger. Then we can have it be lines or dashed or dots. We can control the color as well of that grid. You can have it be blue if you want to. Now if I want to select a brush and do a drawing based on that isometric grid, I can very quickly and easily draw stuff like houses and other man-made objects. And then when I'm done with the grid, I just hide the grid, and there we go, we have our isometric object. The next new feature is improvements to the pop-up palette. If I right-click on my screen now, I get the pop-up palette, and I can have these custom brushes here, I can have my color picker pop up. If I want to, I can rotate the canvas using this little outer dial here. I can zoom in and I can zoom out. If I want to mirror the canvas, I can do that with this button here. I can show my canvas only to hide my palettes, or I can zoom to 100%. So lots of very common commands that you would want to access available here. Next, we'll look at some improvements to the painting assistant tool. That's this icon here. If we look under tool options, then we can change it to perspective. Can click to make a point, click to make another point. 
We can make our little perspective grid here like this. We can change the color of those lines to something else. They could be red, for example, and they can be more transparent. And we could save this too if we want to be able to save it, or we can open other guides. And then once we have those guides, we can select a brush. We can turn on Snap to Assistance and our tool options. And then we can draw right on this guide and it will snap to it. Now sometimes it doesn't stay exactly on the line, it'll go a little bit off. So you can play with the magnetism here to control that, or you can change brush smoothing to something like stabilizer. You can play with these settings here, and now it'll make your brush much smoother. It'll be much easier to draw these straight lines like this. The next new feature that we'll look at is the ability to resize the thumbnails in the brush docker. To do that, we'll click on the top right sub dialog here, and then we can increase or decrease the icon size. So we can make them very tiny so we can see a lot of them, or we can make them very big so we can see just exactly what they're going to do. We can also show details along with the thumbnails, and that'll show the default brush preset size. There's also a new darker theme available in Krita 4.0. To get to that, we go to Settings, Themes, and we can choose Krita Darker. That makes it even darker. And you know what? I think I kind of like that. So that's kind of an overview of what I feel are the top new features in Krita 4.0. That's not absolutely every feature. You can feel free to check out the release notes for version 4.0. There have been lots of bug fixes and other little details that have been tweaked. Definitely give Krita a try if you're interested. It is a completely free and open source application. Now, if you're looking for it on the Windows Store, there is an optional paid version, but that's more of a donation to help Krita keep going. It is free. You don't have to pay for it. You can get it at krita.org. If you enjoyed this demonstration and you'd like to see me create more Krita tutorials, support my channel at patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have tons of videos for digital artists like you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.